That will do. Ooh. Lawrence has made a little post. G'day guys, we are live. LT has made a post. In 2011 I recorded my first podcast with Damien and Brett for the wellness guys. Hmm. Oh, LT. There we go. Are we really live? I think so. Um, yep. Cool, cool, cool. It's been right. a minute. It has been a minute. It has been a minute, LT. Here we go. Wow. I wonder. Oh, there we go. Oh, he wants there. to start podcasting again. Oh, does he? Yeah. He said, um, but here I am after a seven-year hiatus, yep. feeling the urge to scratch that podcasting itch once again. Ooh, wow. So there you go. He's off. There you go. Thinking you go. about it, thinking about it. Um, hey, um, I'll be I'll Are we be really wrapped. live? Yeah, we're live. Um, I'd be wrapped if people join us today because we've, we haven't been on for a long time. How do you? How oh, you're, don't be shoot. bummed if they don't. It's the middle of the day, it's my true. dear old German Shepherd. True. No, you're not a German Shepherd. What are you? A Labrador, no. Magna oh, Doodle, Cavaloodle. Uh, what is it? What's the golden one? Golden Retriever. Has these days? I'm a Golden Retriever. Golden, golden retriever. retriever. Cavoodle. Cavoodle. Not a Magna Doodle. That's the plastic oh, toy that so kids play with. Um, you definitely aren't a Magna Doodle. How to be. 18. This is great. This is riveting entertainment. Hello to everyone that's joined us to hear Damo <laughs> well, spell out the episode title, How to Be 18 Years Old Again. Yeah. Send 200 stars to pin your comments. Does that mean I just keep on hitting like? Someone's um, turned up. Who's turned up? Someone's turned up because... There's people here. Yeah. But Facebook won't tell me. It never tells me. There's a, lot, there's a lot to talk about today. Robin there's Burke. There we go. Robin Burke. Oh, is that gold medal, Robin Burke? Is that your first notification? Robin, welcome, welcome. Robin says, hello, I my think... phone just pinged. It's been a long time. So good to see you both. Oh, Thanks, that... Robin. It has been a long time. Robin, it's been more than a minute. how do you make your phone ping when 100 not out goes off? I've got no idea. you got to put anyone... notifications on. But is it all notifications? So, Robin, does your phone ping Leanne every won. time something happens in Facebook, or do you only get a ping for 100 not out? Because all right, now you're having, conver now you're having conversations time. with people that aren't here. Well, no, they're going to watch it tonight after the dinner's been cooked <laughs> and the kids are in bed. I'll say hi to Leanne. This is, this is how it works. Hi, Leanne. How do you know Leanne? How do you find out about this? I don't get any of this. See, Robin says she puts notifications just on just for us. How about that? This is discriminatory. Oh, is that the little bell? Is that the bell? All right. Let's get into this. All live. You mean when this page goes live. I just found out how to do that. Come on. Everyone that's coming on that doesn't have a bell, go in the chat. You'll see a bell in the top right-hand corner, <laughs> and you'll get a notification when 100 Not Out goes live. Vicky because Chains we don't watching. come on live at the same time Here every we week. Go. Come on. Let's you go. Know? Let's go. PC. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got an appointment? You no, fancy. you're you just waffling. I thought that was important. All right, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> um, we hit, have to hit record. Yeah. Who's going to go? Um, mm, 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 can I record or can you record? Um, I, both, yep. Happy to do it. Yep. Can, can you do it? Because I'm, I'm do it. battling. Oh, no, down there. I've got it. It's not I'm the recording. chat. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Um, in three, two, and one. No, 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 no. I can hear something. I can hear me. Have you got one? Have you got this live playing somewhere? No. Good. Okay. Here we go. In three, two. Oh, sorry, just hold on a minute. Just getting this live up so I can see the comments. Oh, come on, man. Oh, wow. Uh, this is first, oh, time, okay. first time caller, long time listener. First time, long time. Here we go. In three, two, and one. Hello and welcome to 100 Not Out, a weekly show dedicated to helping you master the art of aging well. Marcus Pierce here with you for the 520th time. Woo! And that means. Oh dear mathematicians, we are 10 years young and I couldn't do it without my brother from another mother on International Ted Lasso Day. He is the Ted Lasso <laughs> of longevity, 
Dr. Damien Christoph. Hello, Coach Lasso. Uh, hello, Pizzi. Is it actually Ted Lasso uh, Series 3 today? I thought it was tomorrow. Today. Today yeah. is Ted Lasso oh. Day as we record this on March 15. Bang, that's the timestamp going down on Bang. this podcast. And uh, once this podcast has been recorded mm -hmm. and I get 37 minutes of free time to myself, I am crashing into season three because <laughs> uh, it is out there. And I have you to thank for that recommendation because I tell everyone to watch Ted Lasso. Yeah. And when you told me to watch it, I was like, yeah, no, nah, whatever. Another just cliche sports mm -hmm. something or other. And mm -hmm. it is a game changer. Uh, yeah. So you are the Ted Lasso of longevity. Happy <laughs> 10 years, Damo. Happy 10 years to you too, PC, and uh, may there be another 10 years in us at least. Unbelievable, 10 years. And I was just reading that little post from LT before. He's posted up back in 2011, so that's what, 12 years ago. Uh, we started doing wellness, guys. And then off the offshoot of that for you and me was this, uh, off the back of you know starting the wellness couch. So it's incredible that we're this far down the track and, um, you know, it's, and how much fun has it been? Goodness gracious. And how much have we learned about aging and longevity? Unbelievable. So much we have learned and so many shout outs to give to the millions of people that have listened over those 10 years. We mm. do not check our download stats, but we know it is in the seven figures. It'd be in the eight figures when you put all of the Wellness Couch podcast together, particularly mm. the Wellness Guys, which would take up the large percentage of those downloads because <laughs> it was a number one raging hit but i got an email the other day demo yeah that was addressed to you and i right. from fiona i'm going to muck up her surname coenders and right. she would she just said hi marcus and demo i would like to say thank you uh, that your podcast is still going after all these years she started listening when she was 26 27 in around 2012 um and then as you said came along to 100 not out shortly after that and listened to up for a chat and the wellness guys and da, 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 da. um she's now 38 like this is the thing this has been a, a part of people's lives for a decade plus and mm. to people like fiona mm. and uh many of you that are watching this on facebook at 100 not out or listening on all of the podcast channels we thank you so much for for your support and uh, as you said Damo there's been plenty we've learned over the years but maybe uh well not maybe definitely still a hell of a lot for us to learn yeah yeah so much to learn and so much in fact some so much stuff to learn that sometimes when we read stuff it shocks us and <laughs> I'll tell you what you sent me an article today PC uh that says how to be 18 years old again for only two million dollars per year and I was like what are we talking about here and so Given that PC and I have not read the whole article yet, and it's in the it's in Bloom, on Bloomberg dot com, um, we are gonna pull to pieces. Maybe not to pieces. We're just gonna analyze every single line item of this article, and we'd love it if you're listening because I think you'll learn as we learn about what some perspectives are with regards to longevity and how people want to hack their way into it and do it. So there could be science in this episode there could be philosophy in this episode and there could be a bit of art in this episode um, but what i'd love is for you to listen along and uh we'd love your thoughts on it too so for those of you that are live on facebook watching this right now give us your thoughts as we you know roll out and read out some of the comments and the lines from this particular article because we're going we're going live with this as well so it's as much a learning thing for you as it is for us right so listen to it well a few things a few things here so this is this references uh, an american businessman brian johnson who is 45 BJ. which we'll call him bj for those of you that like your trivia bj is the uh, age of demos and my combined age average name is 49 i'm 41 mm -hmm. that makes us a combined age of 45 on average and this is brian who is planning to have the 18 year old uh he wants to have the 18 year old uh wants to have the brain heart lungs liver kidneys tendons teeth skin hair bladder penis and rectum of an 18 year old and this <laughs> is um something he's spending uh you know $2 million plus per year. That's US, by the way. Um, and this is a 33-paragraph article. And I think, as I was saying to Damo before we hit record, we don't want to come across judgmental because having no. done 522 episodes, we love learning about longevity all the time. But what I would ask and what we'd like to ask all of the listeners is, would you want to spend $2 million a year um, in an attempt, US, in an attempt to be 18 years old again? And this is probably, again... To make your rectum 18 biased. years old. 
Um, I don't know That's a lot of people that want to be 18 years old again, or I know this is very um, anatomical, like to actually have the physiology of um, an 18 year old. But this is where Damo mentions the philosophy and there is going to be some science in here. And the article starts off by referencing people like Novak Djokovic, who, yeah. um, you know, hangs in a pressurized egg to enrich his blood with oxygen. And yeah. he talks to glasses of water and well, Tom we Brady. Do that. We, we used yep, to that's, tape, that's, tape, you know, positive free. affirmations and words to our water. But yep, like, that's free. Like. That's been, that has been scientifically proven, I would say. Yeah, um, that's, um, Tom Brady that was, was has that a lot of. Dr. Emoto. Dr. Emoto's Emoto. Emoto? Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, I think Tom Brady, lots of supplements, hydration powders, pliability spheres. LeBron James spends $1.5 million a year. Oh, um, so people that have the money like to spend the money on their, for want of a better term, um, health and wellness. So Johnson mm. sold his business for $800 million US in cash um, and now has a team of doctors to help him achieve you know, all of those organs that I just mentioned to get to the biological age of 18 years old. But Damo, this is probably my, my first question to you as someone that's been doing this for 10 years with you. He talks about wanting to have the biological age of a, a biological body of an 18 year old. And mm. at the moment, the tests suggest that he has the heart of a 37 year old. Again, this, this man is 45, the skin of a 28 year old, the lung capacity of an 18 year old. Um, and, and you know, the doctors are happy that there's improvement, but Dama, I reckon back in like literally the first year, we were talking about testing for biological age. Um, this is not a new, this is not a new thing. Is it being able to say, well, you know, you have X function of a 27 year old, even though, you know, on the chronological clock, you're 37. Yeah, no, no, it's definitely not new, uh, and and I think that this this is very um, it's subjective to some extent because you get to select the data that would be um, you know age appropriateized. You know what I mean? So, for example, when we used to run the VLA program in our practice, uh, and we don't do that anymore. VLA stands for Vitality Longevity Analysis. So the, it, it, I mean, we're talking longevity back in the late 90s when this you know sort of equipment came out it's like using quad scan technology to you know use bioimpedance and find out what's going on with the body um you selected data so we were selecting hydration muscle mass fat mass um you know uh, hard tissue like bones and based on that information we were then able to determine a biological age with body fat and muscle mass being the most significant markers of aging. So as your body fat went up and your muscle went down, in other words, sarcopenia, as that took place, um, your age went up. So the desire would be to lose body fat and increase your muscle mass. So to get it back to 18 years old, that requires quite a commitment. And it, like for BJ, he's going to have to decide on what metrics he wants to measure to determine his 18 year old status. And he's chosen this like heart, his lungs, rectum, penis, uh, and a few other things. I just wanted to say those words in the same sentence. It's <laughs> <laughs> so juvenile. Ah, uh, it's so funny. I don't know why he'd choose rectum of all the things. Anyway, um, so uh, what, about, what about digestion? I'd love to have digestion of a younger person. What about be eyes? I think eyes, eyes, vision, like, hearing. Yeah. Like there's those yeah. things, like real things. When you get to fifty, things start to fall apart. That's what I'm thinking about. I want my eyes back. Yeah, I want the hearing joint back. Joint health. Yeah. Joint health. Well, my joints are pretty good. I think. Um, I think golf helps me with that. But I, I'd love to be able to hit the ball as far as an eighteen year old. That'd be good. So maybe you get to choose your markers of longevity. Let's just say that. So whatever it is, what could you do when you were eighteen that you'd like to be able to do again? And that's what we're mm. saying. This is how you're going to do it. You know what I mean? So mm. it's not we're going to go and say, all right, your ticker is going to be that of an eighteen year old. So your resting heart rate is going to be at thirty five. That's not what we're talking about. We're saying, okay, what were you able to do at eighteen? Um, that uh, that you'd like to still be able to do or get back to being able to do. That's how I would measure it these days. I don't think I'd go as super high detail and data as uh, what BJ's done in this particular thing. But I don't have two million bucks to spend, PC. <laughs> it's all going into real estate. <laughs> two million. Yeah, it's all going to real estate. Two million bucks. So, so that's a lot. Yeah, uh, per year, and that doesn't include the cost of setting up the actual uh, medical suite in his home and. All of this. So, 30 so, doctors. so let's just let's just 
develop this just again so that we can come along from the – just get, give all of the listeners a, a lot of the information that um, Johnson has, I would say, very graciously shared yeah. with the public So yeah. and, and yeah. his team of, of medical um, professionals. So mm. he's on a strict vegan diet of 1,977 calories a day. I find that incredibly specific. Uh, specific. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's and doing not an a calorie more. Of- that's right, and, yeah, and uh, he's less. doing an hour a day of exercise, uh, high intensity, three times a week, which I think is completely fair and reasonable. Good, yeah. Um, he's sleeping at the same time every night. Yep. Um, and That's because he doesn't to have to work. What... Yeah. <laughs> he's got no kids and doesn't have to work. That's what that is. Uh, after two hours wearing um, blue light blockers. Is he married? So... I don't know. We might get to that. We'll find out. Um, In the interest of fine-tuning this program, he constantly monitors his vital signs. Each month, he endures dozens of medical procedures, some quite extreme and some painful. Mm -hmm. Then he measures their results with additional blood tests, MRIs, ultrasounds, and colonoscopies. Let me tell you, your rectum's not going to be the age. Your rectum's not going to be the age of an 18-year-old if you keep on getting colonoscopies. Unless, unless yeah, you're kind of then, sitting um, on it and like clenching, like to improve muscle tone. Okay, enough already. One of his medical <laughs> team says, uh, "I treat athletes and Hollywood celebrities, and no one is pushing the envelope as much as Brian." Um, all the doctors, all the work the doctors say has started to pay off. Johnson's body is, as they measure it, getting medically younger. Wow. So then they go on to talk about um, some of his um, results, which we've already mentioned. And the doctors are saying it's good that we've achieved results. Yes, they're small, but they're they're in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um, just going on here, just references his business background. Uh, he had he was in very poor health when he sold the business, so that was really the catalyst for really going in. You know, um, feet first, wallet first. With this, <laughs> is to actually get himself right. Mm. Um, Damo, just to come back on a couple of things here. You know, we've been kind of guffawing and, and making jokes of the the dollars involved, but I suppose my initial resistance when I read something like this is it's not scalable uh, mm. and, and it's not accessible yet. But I'm also really conscious not to be come across as so judgmental about this because I was as I was chatting to you before we hit record, like didn't X-rays come about? You know, well the inventor of X-rays died of excess radiation. You know, we in the process of creating something which many of us are all grateful of. Um, we've all, you know, uh, had an x-ray that's helped us in, in a number of ways. Like where do you stand on this from the pioneers perspective of these pioneers that, um, I don't want to say they sacrifice their life, but a lot of them end up doing so. You could argue Steve Jobs sacrificed his life, um, you know, for all that we have today. So where do you stand on this perspective? You know, cause here I am, you know, not taking pot shots, but I am guffawing a bit at some of the um, (laughs) strategies he's using. Like, where do you stand on that from a professional perspective of being the pioneer that that is going to cop the uh, criticism when you're doing something so outside the box? Oh, I love that BJ is doing this. I think this is unreal. The reason why I love it is that someone's got to do it. Uh, and there's other people out there. We know Ben Greenfield's also doing it, BG. He's been doing it. And uh, and we know that there's other people out there, and probably I think even Lance Armstrong's doing it, you know. Um, so uh, maybe also, um, who's his mate, your mate, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. So, yep. David Sinclair. That's all on the back of David Sinclair's work. Um, yeah. So they're is, all doing yeah, it, right? So- they're all doing it. So there's this, you know, there's this potential. There's a possibility that all the money in the world could actually help you live a long time. Because these guys have a lot of money and they can do that stuff. Um, but we won't know whether or not it actually works until they get there. And it's possible, it's possible that if you do things to that sort of level, that there may be some biological and physiological effects that you can't control because you've um, altered some things that will affect upstream and downstream functions within you know the, the physiology of the body. So... I don't know, like good on them. I think it's unreal. Like if you, we've spoken about this too, like in terms of all the diets, Dr. Atkins died of heart disease. Um, you know, you look at um, who was the ve- who was the vegan woman? Yeah, South Beach diet, or so, well, um, yeah. Um, so South Beach diet, Montagnac died of prostate cancer at sixty six, yeah. and Pritikin. um, Pritikin died. At, committed suicide after he had cancer at I think at sixty nine. Yeah, who was the and, vegan uh, who died? Davis. Of, someone died of 
Yeah, uh, Adele Davis died, died 70. But, yeah, this is yeah. the thing. This is so, kind of – yeah, they're our pioneers, right? They're our pioneers. And so we've seen them try that with diet. And diet is the simplest form of nutrition biohacking, right? So you find your diet that it you know that seems to work well for you. Um, you espouse to the benefits of a particular diet, a particular regime. You know, BJ is gone for the vegan option here, uh, which is good, you know, good on him. Um, and you know, whether that's for health reasons or it's altruistic it's hard to know um i I don't know if that actually gets discovered or spoken about this and maybe if we get him on we might even get him on to talk who knows um pc is pretty good at getting you know world famous guests so we might be able to do that but it'd be interesting to find out what his driver is to be vegan why did he choose vegan over mediterranean when the evidence would suggest that mediterranean is the longevity diet or the okinawan Mm. way like why didn't he choose the okinawan way why is he chosen to be more like loma linda um, in his approach um you know rather than any other kind of eating program from a biohacking perspective which is what he's trying to do so uh interesting interesting mate there's a I suppose where a lot of these people are coming from, and this is something I'd love to chat with you about, is that, um, and I know particularly, you know, David Sinclair, who I think many people would say is uh, almost say the leader of this medical longevity movement, mm. is that their view is that aging is a disease, and yeah. they treat aging as a disease, a bit like and it's a controversial topic, but a lot of people would, um, you know observe that almost pregnancy has been treated like a sickness and it's got to be treated like yeah. and a lot of mums say that it just they, they go in a hospital they feel like they're being treated like they're sick and they're, they're bringing a baby into the world mm. aging is being um viewed at these ways and i'm not putting words into their mouth in david sinclair's book it literally is aging is a disease and that's the philosophical question that i think it's so important for our listeners to consider when they um decide on their own um actions and behaviors around wanting to make the rest of their life the best of their life, are you doing it because getting older is a disease mm-hmm. and, and you want to stop it with so many different procedures? Um, or is it is it a, how do I say it without sounding silly, like is it a, a natural part of life that you embrace and you engage with and you experience the rites of passages of all of the different ages that you go through, um, regardless of the health of your physical body, but you actually appreciate you appreciate the the um, the natural processes of aging. It's the thing. That's why it's definitely not black and white, is it? Because even, even as I say it, it's like, well, no. Like we all want vitality at seventy or eighty or ninety or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, you can't. You can't. Um. Okay, so here's something. Here's something for you, right? Here's something. So let's say, yeah. for example, um, I said to you, PC, I can guarantee that you're going to live to a hundred, but these are the things you've got to do. You can't have pizza. You're not allowed to drink anything in terms of alcohol ever again. It's water only. Thanks, PC. And you could have, you know, a little bit of almond juice, almond milk, if you wanted to. You can't have coffee because that's going to have a biological and physiological impact on you. No more chocolate for you, okay? Because it has to be vegan only. Um, And for dinner, there'll be no more lamb on the barbie. There'll be no more goat stew. There's not going to be any bocconcini, don't you worry, but you can have the tomato and the basil, no problems. And if you want to bulk up your meal, you can have some more broccoli. Like if I said that to you, you've got that for the rest of your life, would you take that option? Uh, well, no, but no, no. no. But here's, here's the other thing, like where are, the, where are the questions on like, well, I suppose I suppose for me when you say that, so much of food I relate to special times with, family and friends like what would if we take out all those ingredients damo when i catch up with you honestly mm. like after we've been for a romantic walk together yes. uh along bayside did you say coffee in that no coffee, coffee you wouldn't be able to do it yeah coffee coffee's out yeah coffee's out bock and cheney's out so i don't get to have your special bock and cheney basil and tomato hors d'oeuvre on arrival at the christoph residence yeah and i don't get a glass of wine um, I'm having a glass of water, a glass yep. of Misty's water, and you and I are just chatting, which is great. But we've lost a lot of the um, we've lost a lot of the romance. <laughs> we've lost a lot of the trimmings. What if also I said that in order for you to maximise your nutrition 
um, absorption, every meal that you had had to be blended and you had to drink it. Like, so you can have... Is that, is that what Johnson's doing? This is what he's doing. So well, I don't know if it's every meal, but like the broccoli, the mushrooms, the lentils, the seeds and the cauliflower, they're all there ready to put into a blender so that you can mush it up. Um, which I think is probably the best way to consume those foods to have them as mushed up because unless you chew it properly, you, you're probably not going to get access to all the nutrients. And if you're limiting your calories to just under 2,000 a day and it's all vegan, um, which essentially that means that everything there is going to be plant-based carbohydrate, which is good but and healthy because it contains lots of you know micronutrients and polyphenols and plant-based chemicals that's all good but in order to access all of that in its raw state because it looks it also looks raw it's have it in its raw state you're gonna have to have it blended in order to do that so in order to enjoy a long life you're gonna have to have all your food from 41 years old you're gonna have to drink it it's not sounding can i add a few more can i add a few more bullet points to your list yeah go on and i don't know if you've been scanning this but um at so at 5 a.m., Johnson takes two dozen supplements and medicines. There's lycopene for artery and skin health, metformin, which I know you love, to prevent bowel polyps. That's a joke for everyone listening. <laughs> Turmeric, black pepper, and ginger root for liver enzymes to reduce inflammation. Zinc to supplement his vegan diet. A microdose of lithium for, he says, brain health. Then there's an hour-long workout consisting of 25 different exercises and a green juice packed with creatine, cocoa, flavanols, collagen, peptides, and other goodies. Throughout the day, he eats some solidish health food. We'll get there with the recipes. Uh, we've just discussed that. After eating, Johnson brushes water picks and flosses before rinsing with tea tree oil and applying an antioxidant gel. His doctors say he has the gum inflammation of a 17-year-old. There's a regimen and series of measurements for every last part of Johnson's body. He's taken 33,537 images of his bowels, discovered that his eyelashes are shorter than average and probed the thickness of his carotid artery. Carotid. He blasts his pelvic, he blasts his pelvic floor uh, carotid, so he blasts his pelvic floor with uh, electromagnetic pulses to improve muscle tone in hard to reach places and has a device that counts a number of his nighttime erections. Mm. Of late, he's been presenting as a teenager in that regard as well. Daily, he measures his weight, body mass <laughs> index, and body fat, and he monitors his waking body temperature, blood glucose, heart rate variations, and oxygen levels while sleeping. He's also undergoing a fairly constant stream of blood, and urine tests as well as whole body MRIs and ultrasounds plus regular tests aimed more specifically at his kidneys, prostate, thyroid and nervous system and the last paragraph before Damo explodes. To repair sun damage to his skin, Johnson applies seven daily creams and gets weekly acid peels and laser therapy and he's begun staying out of the sun. To improve hearing in his left ear, which suffered from childhood hunting trips in Utah. He does sound therapy, which tests the limit of the frequencies he can hear. He has, however, rejected many of the internet's favorite health fads, including resveratrol, ice baths, and high doses of testosterone. Whew, Damo, quite the list. I just wonder, obviously, we spoke about sustainability at the start and, you know, and scalability. You know, obviously, not everyone's going to be able to do all of what BJ is doing. Um, but some people might be able to, but I wonder how long you're going to want to do it for. Like, is this something that BJ is going to want to do for the rest of his life? Obviously at 800 million, it's costing him 2 million per year. He's 45. Let's say he wants to do it for another 55 years. If you can lock that in, he's got a $110 million deal there with the doctors to keep him alive for another 55 years. There's probably some doctors that will want to take that check and, and do that. But do you get, sick of it and sore of it and start to wonder whether or not this is what life's all about like is it just about reaching a number and for me the answer is no yes i want to make it to 100 not out i want to raise the bat and maybe like in fact if we do that another 10 let's we're looking at another oh my gosh two and a half thousand episodes if we want to do that um <laughs> which we might who knows wouldn't that be unbelievable who knows if podcasting is going to be around that time i i, I want to raise the bat we'll record a podcast at that time but i don't know if i want to be injecting myself with a whole bunch of stuff and doing chemical peels i don't think that what's in those creams are going to be that good for you 
I know that some people talk about them as being anti-aging, but when you have silicon dioxide and disodium, blah, 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 and um, titanium dioxide and all these sorts of things that are in these creams and you put them onto your body, we don't know the long-term net effect of that. Someone says that they're good. I'd be better. I would feel better in myself taking the testosterone boost on a daily basis than putting seven different creams in my body. I have to tell you, I feel mm. better about that. I'd be more... much happier with the ice bath. And let me. The mm, other thing yeah. is too that if you've got to take a supplement to supplement your diet because your diet's not giving you enough, then you might as well choose whichever other diet you want to have. You know what I mean? And if you're taking something to decrease inflammation, I would question where's the inflammation coming from? So if you're taking turmeric to decrease inflammation, where's that inflammation coming from? Is Mm. it a matter of, you know, is it coming from your lifestyle? Is it coming from the calorie restriction? Is it coming from your intense exercise? Why have you got inflammation? I'd like to ask that question. Why are you taking Mm. it? Anyway, there's lots of questions in this article for me, I've got to tell you. I've got got one more for you before we uh, farewell on our 10th birthday edition so Mm. the journalist goes on to say johnson's lifestyle isn't for me Mm. in september shortly before i walked up to his door in venice for dinner he texted to warn me that he just had some fat injected into his face and seemed to be suffering from an allergic reaction to the excruciating procedure as a result he said he might look a little weird he Mm. was not wrong when Mm. he opened the door i could barely recognize him his face was so puffed up it looked like he'd spent the afternoon chucking chugging bee venom <laughs> trying to steal his, sorry his pale skin was glowing absent of most of the flaws that accompany middle age he could have been mistaken for a big swollen porcelain doll i don't mean to laugh because that would have been excruciating and sore and everything else but this is just a reminder and a question to all of our listeners like what extent are you prepared to go to to live a long life and and where is the conversation of quality um of longevity in your um philosophy and approach to life so again we're not coming here to judge brian johnson good on him for living the life that he wants to live uh the way that we approach longevity is without doubt um on the complete opposite side of the coin and spectrum to brian johnson but it's just uh, important for us to share with you um the other side of the coin so that as listeners you can continue to make your own decisions on how to make the rest of your life the best of your life yeah, but can I just... There's a couple other things I want to just go through in this article. You we can do it. a second episode. Yeah, go, on, go, on, go on, Don't go yet. Don't go yet, everybody. Um, so one of the... Zolman. Is Zolman one of the doctors? Is Zolman? Yeah. He's one of the doctors. Yep. He says, There is little to no evidence that having a fatter, more youthful face or luscious red hair offer clinical benefits on their own. But if you do this at a whole body level, it becomes clinically relevant. If you restore young fat level distribution throughout the whole body, you're going to have a less toxic comp- you're having you're going to have less toxic compounds being secreted and affecting the rest of your body, and you're going to have things like a better heat control. If you had no fat, you'd be effing dead. If you had no skin, you'd be effing dead. <laughs> These are not aesthetic organs. Anyway, I think this is just hilarious. Um, when you go back to looking at the diet, um, it's. it's you know, he's not the, he's having some chocolate, um, but his chocolate is probably closer to your chocolate, not my chocolate. Um, so it's closer to that dark stuff that tastes like horrendous and um and it's not as milky as the chocolate that I love to have too. So anyway, but he's doing everything because he's trying to maximize the impact of it all. Um and I would go so far as to say and I agree with that Dr. Zolman here, that very much most of what BJ is doing appears to be aesthetic. Um, and it's to keep him in good shape, probably so he can pull the hot young women or men that he's into. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter what he's into, that's fine. Um, but I think he wants to pull the young one still. So I think that's what that is. Um, I don't think it's about making it to 100 because much of this I, I can't see um working to be honest to be honest with you that's just my thing that's that's where couple my of, head's at yeah a couple of questions have come up about his marital status he actually is a dad right uh, the lifestyle seems exhausting but johnson revels in it as does his 17 year old son talmage how much as our dinner kicked off talmage came into the house after a workout For a moment, he was taken aback at his dad's swollen face. Then he let out a chuckle as if he'd seen this type of thing before. Talmadge Mm -hmm. prepared his uh, own specialised dinner 
alongside us and said he's adopted some but not all of his dad's practices. For one, he doesn't do the vegetable sludge, preferring his veggies raw or sautéed. After dinner, father and son watched as I inserted my arm into a cardiac health monitor on Johnson's Kitchen Island. Yeah, so... Um, Okay, so he's into men. I mean, he's into women. So that's that's fine. And so he's got a son, uh, which is great. Um, Zolman is is actually also into trying to achieve the same thing as well, according to this article. And there's a little picture there of Zolman, um, and he looks very lean, but certainly not. I mean, he's ripped because there's not an ounce of fat on this dude. So, uh, but I don't know if he's strong and healthy. Anyway, very so interesting. This is really, this is very, very interesting and triggers me a little bit, i got to tell you, PC. Like, it triggers me a little bit. And so I think this yep. is important for us to kind of reflect on because there'll be people here that might actually get a little bit triggered by this approach. But I say, good on the dude for doing it from the perspective of that someone's got to, and if it works, unbelievable, awesome, good job, good, great job. But for me, that's not where I want to be. Um, and that might mean that I make it to a hundred, a different way to the way in which this guy gets to a hundred, but, um, we'll see, we'll yeah. see. There's no race and to a hundred, we've just got to get there first. Yeah. And in that, in that medical space, it's often, cause it, it comes at the end here, you know, a geneticist says, um, I think what Brian is doing is very well intentioned and probably very, very important. And he, he said, he says, I also don't think a lot of this stuff will be all that expensive when the dust settles and that and that very much is a medical method isn't it that it does cost a lot of money in that pioneering phase and then as it becomes further tested and adopted and so on then it brings down the cost so if that's the if that's the intention for medical longevity to go down to make this type of stuff more accessible for people then then they might achieve their goal but we're probably Mm. saying that's probably not the goal that you and i are looking for no no, yeah, absolutely. Well, interesting, far out. I'm glad you found this article and sent it through because um, it's made interesting reading, interesting discussion. Love to hear your thoughts on it. I think Robin enjoyed it. Um, and Ben Shoots actually got an interesting comment here. London to a brick, he won't get to 100. Wanker. Well, <laughs> there you go, Ben. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Uh, Robin, uh, Julieta <laughs> loves no uh, loves dark chocolate. She loves it. Um, and, and, you know, thanks so much for joining. And Heather Lee. Um, says, how's the Manuka honey on any small wounds? I tried that, way too messy, and not to mention the inconvenience. Yeah, but you taste <laughs> so good, Heatherly. Like, you just it taste so good. so good. So sweet. That's it. So sweet. Um, this has been a really good, I think, um, uh, what's it called? Put your stake in the ground at our 10th birthday. It's a test of our maturity to have this conversation and to be able to bring the other side of the coin in. Um, again, Damo and I are never like, we're right, you're wrong. We're yeah, all just about yeah. having a conversation around mm-hmm what it takes to age gracefully and um, we thank you for your support over the last 10 years and look forward to your support over the next decade and beyond. Damo, you are younger than you've ever been. You have aged (laughs) so gracefully over these 10 years and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your companionship, your friendship, your co-hosting, your determination to get this message out there um, on the same level as myself over the last 10 years and may you and I and our community of 100 Not Outers continue to prosper for many years to come. Mm, thank you, PC. Happy birthday. Happy 10-year birthday. And thank you so much for sharing every single one of these episodes with me. It's been really fantastic. I love it. In fact, you know what? I think you have done a couple of episodes by yourself uh, without me. In fact, you interviewed... You interviewed um, De- yeah, um, I interviewed Dr. Sanduk Ruit, yeah. um, who is a Nepalese eye doctor. Yes. You were somewhere uh, in the world. Who else you did you interview? Someone, someone in Sydney. You interviewed somebody in Sydney. Um, I don't know. That um, one escapes me. Apologies to that. The happiest person. man on earth. The happiest man on earth. You interviewed um, Eddie Jake. Oh, Eddie that was when yeah. I was in. Yeah, but I was in. I was with him at the museum, and we just played yeah. some of that conversation. But then yeah. you and I interviewed him together because you found him yeah. through Jackson's School, I think. Gosh, that goes to show how long we've been going. Oh, Didn't he speak at Jackson's School? Now he's twenty-three. Oh wow! Golly gosh! Yeah, we're twenty-two. Amazing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Well. Wow. Yes. Mm. All right. The time flies to all of you that have supported us over the years. Thank you for your support of 100 Not Out. And until next week, continue to make the rest of your life the best of your life. And bye for now. Good, good, good. Thanks, Facebook. Oh, I better push stop. I'm recording, aren't I? Hang on. Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to say, oh, I better record it.
<laughs> Imagine that. Wow, we. Thanks, Julietta. Great to have you on here. Well, Julietta, guys, just so you, you know, I'm organising the Nazareth 33 year reunion because we should have had our reunion. Um, maybe it's probably going to be the 31st or the 30th. Anyway, that, it's did you go to school with Julietta? Yeah, Julietta and I went to school together. Yeah. I love this. Your old school friends come on here. This is yeah. divine. This yeah. is great. Yeah. Yeah. Julietta, she married one of my mates, Vince. Um, oh, from high I love school. that. Yeah. Cute. I love that. But uh, yes, um, life goes by, and uh, and you reconnect. So, but I am organising the reunion because our school, Nazareth College. I'm shaming you right now. Nazareth College has done absolutely jack s to involve the alumni of the college, and uh, so I'm going to try and get that going. I've got nothing else to do, so I figured I might as well. It's still going, still going, Nazareth College. I'm Googling it now, Co-Ed College. Oh, yeah, uh, it's kicking goals. They're doing well. Noble Park? Yeah, they're doing fine. So you're you're getting no no communication, no comms? Zero. I might call them now, actually. That's what I'll do. I'm going to drive and get my hair cut. I'm going to get my hair cut. Yeah, I'm going to get my hair cut. Have a chat to Sam Cosentino, go straight to the top. Mm -hmm. Let them know. Yeah, I will. Alumni being... uh, Ghosted. We need some contact. Wouldn't happen at Xavier. Oh, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're good on their comms. They're good they on their are, comms. They are. All right, I'm going to finish off this Facebook. See you later, Facebook. See you. See you, Facebook.